five ham radio things you should be doing this winter. Stick around and we'll get right to it. All right, so I know all of you guys out there that are in North America are just longing for springtime and warmer weather. And you're kind of just wondering what you might want to be doing over the winter as it concerns ham radio. Well, today I've got five things for you and a couple of bonuses at the end. So let's go ahead and jump into it. The first is look over your equipment. Now, this primarily pertains to those of us that are portable operators and go out to do parks on the air, activation summits on the air, things like that. But this can also apply to those radios that sit in the shack all the time as well. And that's just inspect your equipment. For instance, at Winterfield Day, I ran into a bad coax jumper that I didn't even realize was bad until I plugged it up and my SWR was off the chart. Turns out that was a bad connector that with just a visual inspection, I could have easily caught had I've looked at it before I went out on that trip. So take a look at your coax, uh, take a look at your coax uh, ends, the, the connectors on them. Make sure everything's tight. If it's something in the shack, if it's something you're carrying out portable, give it a good visual inspection. Look at the jacket on the coax. Uh, look at your power connections, your, all of your power pole leads. Take a meter, go across those, make sure you still got good continuity. Just give your system a once over and make sure that everything is in good working order. Now let's talk about those go bags that a lot of you guys have put together. A lot of times we put those together and we really don't think too much about them until we grab one of them to head out the door. Now if you've moved over to the modular system like I have, this doesn't apply to you quite as much, but still worth looking through. What I want you to do is take those bags that you use for portable ops, whether it's uh, parks on the air activation or whether it's a summits on the air activation, and I want you to completely empty those bags. Completely. Don't cheat here. Because you may find things buried at the bottom of that bag that you have completely forgotten about. Do you remember anything that you may have robbed out of that bag or a trip that you did where you were missing something that maybe wasn't mission critical, but it would have been a nice to have item? Go ahead and add that to the kit. Now, take another look at it. Are there things in there that you haven't used in the last six months, maybe a year? I try to go through uh, my various bags with different components in them at least every six months, but once a year at a bare minimum. And I like to remove any components that haven't been used over the last several trips. And as I've done this over the years, it's helped lighten that load by probably two pounds, not carrying around junk, that I never used. Number three is use this opportunity when we're stuck inside due to the winter weather to learn something new. Maybe it is JSA Call that you've never played with. Go ahead and install that on your computer and give it a whirl. Maybe you've never messed around with FT8 or maybe you've never played with Direwolf or maybe you've never played with Winlink. While you're stuck inside, go ahead and take this opportunity to at least toy with something new, even if you don't end up using it long term. This time of year is fantastic for building antennas, those that you can build on the bench in the warmth of your shack. Uh, so if you've picked up an antenna like my InFed Half-Wave Kit or the K6ARK Kit or maybe the car antenna and you haven't assembled that guy yet, this is a great opportunity to go ahead and get those kits out of the drawer and complete that build. Far too many of us are guilty of not updating our computers on a regular basis. So if it's been a while since you've updated that computer, or since you've backed it up, go ahead and take the time to do both of those now. This will help uh, eliminate any security holes that might be in your OS that would be patched by a new update. So this applies to Windows, Mac, and Linux devices. So definitely want to keep those guys up to date. Uh, I would do a backup before I updated. I would go ahead and do my update, verify everything worked, and then do another backup. This will ensure that you've got a 
the latest updates and B, a good backup just in case something goes south. Two bonus items for you here today, ham clock and the Pi Weather Display. Now, maybe you've started down the Raspberry Pi trail before and decided it just wasn't quite for you, and that Pi has been relegated to the junk drawer. Well, now is a great time to get that thing out and repurpose it to do something else. Either a ham clock display for your shack or the Pi Weather Display. Now, I've done uh, videos on both of those in the past, and I'll leave links to both of those down in the description below. It's a fun project. Either one of those will only take you about a day to get built and configured, so doesn't take a lot of time, or you could spread that out, work on it over two or three days. But if you want to get it done now, and you start on it uh, first thing in the morning, you can probably have it done before you go to bed this evening. Now, I know Raspberry Pis are still, as of the time of this recording, very difficult to get your hands on. But this is a great project if you've got one laying in the drawer not being used at the moment. Do you think I missed something on today's list? Leave it down in the comments below. I would love to hear your recommendations of what we should be doing during these cold months. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.